Hey, what is up? Dalton from MSI here and with AMD Ryzen 5000 CPUs now available. Um, I thought right now would be a great time to do a little bit of an upgrade to our studio. One, to our studio PC where we do a lot of recording and live streaming and some of our camera accessories as well. Here's our current camera setup. We actually have these mini converters, HDMI to SDI mini converters that will take a camera signal and send it to our studio PC right now. Here's our current PC. It's an 8700 on a MSI ACE motherboard. Can't remember what chipset. There's a RTX 2070, I believe. That's the Deck Link Duo that takes in all the SDI inputs uh, from our converters. Uh, one thing that I wanted to upgrade is these devices is because they currently max out at a 1080p 60 FPS resolution. Uh, so we're gonna switch them out and hopefully get 4K 30. Another thing that I'm gonna swap out is this overhead camera angle that we're using. Currently it's a GoPro Hero 5 Black and I'm gonna switch it out with a Sony ARG Zero Mark II. The main reason is that I just don't think GoPros perform that well in low light settings. Uh, I think they do exceptionally well in bright daylight, but in an indoor setting like this, even with these lights that we have, it tends to look very pixelated. Just overall, the image quality seems like it takes a dip. So let's get to swapping out these components before we get into the actual PC build. Okay, so onwards to the PC build. Uh, so at the core of our system is going to be this Ryzen 5 5600X. We're gonna be pairing that with the MAG X570 Tomahawk motherboard. We've had this motherboard for a while. Uh, we're gonna need to do a BIOS update with that. We partnered with ADATA slash XPG for this build and we'll be using 64 gigabytes of the Spectrix D50 memory and a two terabyte Gamix S50 Lite PCIe Gen 4 drive. The memory kit is rated at 3200 megahertz speed. And while it seems that Ryzen 5000 CPUs can benefit from faster speed memory, I don't think I'll realistically notice the performance difference. And these kits are on promotion during the week of Black Friday 2020. So if you're watching this from November 23rd to the 27th, 2020, check the description for more info on that, as well as MSI's own holiday 2020 promotions. Let's go ahead and time-lapse through the PC build. So prior to us building this PC, I filmed the other parts that we were going to use in this build with the new Sony ARG Zeros that we got. Uh, one thing I didn't know about these cameras were that they don't have continuous autofocus in video mode while it's recording. So all the shots of the other components were out of focus because there's only like I think two preset modes for focusing on the ARG Zeros. Uh, it's like a near and far preset and so once you start recording with those cameras, they, they lock into one of those presets and then so it doesn't adjust while you're actually recording. So I'm gonna go over the other parts that we used in this build right now. For the case, we'll be using the Gunnier 111M. It has a mostly mesh front panel. It comes with four pre-installed fans, one non-RGB for the rear exhaust and three RGBs for the front intake. Cooling the 5600X is the MAG Core Liquid 240R a 240 millimeter AIO liquid cooler that we released earlier this year alongside a 360 millimeter version. For the GPU, we currently have a GeForce RTX 3070 Gaming X Trio, although initially the plan was to use this new Supreme X RTX 3090. Unfortunately, due to the massive heatsink on the Supreme card, it came into contact with our DeckLink AK Pro capture card when we tried to install both. We had two options at this point. Either swap out the motherboard with more spacing between two PCIe x16 slots or use a different graphics card. And it was much easier to do the latter. Last but not least, powering our entire system is one of our new products that should be coming out soon, 
Uh, this one is the MPG A850GF. It's an 850 watt, 80 plus gold power supply. There should also be a 750 watt and a 650 watt. At the time of filming, these aren't quite available at retailers yet, but they should be coming fairly soon. Just to show that everything is working correctly as intended, I'm gonna go ahead and set up two of the camera angles inside OBS. So first thing I need to do is double check that the video resolution is in 4K. So that's, was it 3840 by 2160, output scale, yep. And then since we can only do 30 from these cameras, I'll just drop the FPS value down to 30 frames per second hit apply. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new source down here. Blackmagic device, create new. Camera should be on and it should be this channel, channel two. Everything is set on auto and hit okay. And it looks like it is already transmitting a 4K signal. Create a new scene for the boom camera. Hit new source, Blackmagic device. Okay, doesn't seem like it's in channel three. All right, so the boom arm is in channel four. Hit okay. This is actually a setting on the RX-0 that we need to adjust inside the menu. So right now it's outputting at a 1920 by 1080 resolution. I'll need to go into menu for this. Was it in setup? Okay. So I need to go down to 4K output select. I will just do HDMI only, hit OK, and that should automatically resize to a 4K resolution inside OBS. Everything's working perfectly fine. The system's running fine. The two cameras that we currently have hooked up are acting as intended. Now with the a7 III set up across the table to film this outro, it's now hooked up to our new studio PC uh, with the 5600X. Off to my right was the monitor, is the monitor that I was using to set up OBS to make sure that uh, everything was filming at 4K 30. I'm also now using it as a viewfinder to uh, make sure that I'm in frame, this thing is in frame, I have proper headroom, you know, so that my forehead isn't fighting with the top of the frame and that I don't have any unwanted products or items in the shot. Uh, like my work laptop is just peeking in a little bit, but I have some accessories and boxes that are just off to my left outside of frame. This whole setup that we have here just makes it easier for one person to produce a video like how I currently am. Uh, you know, I'm the only one in the studio right now. There's no one behind the camera. I'm using OBS as a way to quickly monitor everything that the camera sees. If I had my stream deck or keyboard hooked up to this desktop, I could quickly switch between the different camera angles, you know, from the wide to the overhead to the close up. Um, yeah, so this setup just makes it possible for one person to handle the entire video production process while standing in front of the camera instead of behind it. So that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this little look behind the scenes at our setup and found it somewhat interesting. Again, a big thank you to ADATA slash XPG for partnering with us for this video. The memory that we used in this build is on promotion during the week of Black Friday 2020. So if you're watching this between November 23rd to the 27th and wanna check out that deal, I'll include that in the description as well as MSI's own Black Friday promotions. Thank you for watching. Let us know in the comments if you plan to upgrade to AMD's new Ryzen 5000 CPUs, or if you have any feedback or suggestions to our studio setup, as I'm always looking for ways to improve our workflow here.